a while ago I had this idea for a video outlining 10 different things that people moving to Oklahoma could do to become more local, meaning to become natives or locals faster, or to have the experience of locals. And for this one, I decided to ask my friend Jonathan to join me. Jonathan and I are both real estate agents here in the Oklahoma City Metro. And we also did a video on his channel about 10 surprising things about Oklahoma. We will link that video at the end of this one for you to watch, so stick around. Okay, Jonathan, so we have a list of 10 different things that are pretty Oklahoman, right? And I think we both have opinions on these, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so what do you think is the most Oklahoman food? Well, you know, it's hard to say. Um, mm -hmm. For me growing up, the one thing that I always think of, at least from my childhood, is uh, it seems like I was just absolutely in love with pecan pie. Pecan so, pie. Almost, you know, once or twice a week, it seems like that was something I was asking for my mom to make, so we had available for dessert. Okay. Um, but also just really anything that was accompanied with like a side of fried okra. Yeah. That was definitely yes. something. But only in August. Yeah. For yeah. fried okra. Yeah, yeah, that's the rule. Yeah, for sure. To me, biscuits and gravy is that thing that I remember from growing up, especially, and I eat them a ton now. Sure. One of my favorite restaurants to get them at is actually a Mexican restaurant here. Interesting. <laughs> and then, of course, my mom's is my favorite. Well, I definitely had my share of biscuits and gravy, so yeah. I, can't, I can't argue with that. I didn't even realize until I got to college that like in the north they don't really, they don't have biscuits, they don't eat yeah. that. It's so well. I don't, <laughs> yeah. what, what are you guys doing? Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? Why aren't you eating biscuits and gravy? That's horrible, so, <laughs> sorry. All right, we think the number two thing here is weather. And this isn't something that you can necessarily um, control. However, there is interesting weather patterns here in Oklahoma. And I think if you know anything about Oklahoma, you kind of know that. So have you ever been in a tornado before? Julia, we got cows. So as long as I've um, lived here in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City, I've actually interestingly never been in the eye of the storm or okay. tornado. So That's good. I've, I've certainly been a part, you know, as, as we all do, we watch yeah. the tornado watches. Mm -hmm. There have been a few tornado warnings that, yes. you know, where I've had to, to, to find cover. Yeah. Um, and But other than that, I haven't actually been in an actual tornado. Now, when I lived mm -hmm. out east in Henrietta, Oklahoma mm -hmm. in my childhood for a very short period of time, I was very close to a tornado. Yeah. In fact, we had a 20 horse trailer end up in my neighbor's yard. Okay. Uh, but that's scary. It did not come through uh, and wreck our property yeah. at all. So that's the closest I've come. How about yeah. you? Yeah, so the one I've come closest to was actually the May, uh, was it May 19th tornado 2013. So my husband was in that one. So the hospital he was working in got hit and he was in the basement. Um, so if you guys had seen, you know, the. Uh, footage from that tornado like in the hospital like it was oh yeah flattened um, and for that one like I actually didn't know him yet but I was working at a gym in Newcastle and the tornado started right behind the Walmart and the like the gym I was working in was right in front of the Walmart but we actually went to the Walmart to take over <laughs> Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so they're taking cover a few times since then, but never like been in one. And most Oklahomans haven't. I actually remember being, uh, you know, that storm happening mm. because I was working at a Chili's at the time in oh. Oklahoma City. <laughs> and uh, and we all went to the walk-in freezer. Yes. Now, it never actually came to our part of town, but we yeah. did see, of course, the devastation that occurred um, everywhere else. So yeah. That was a wild, wild storm. Yeah. Course. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so there are some very unique Oklahoma events, and I think going to some of the, these events can really uh, help you become more local quickly because you're around a bunch of Oklahomans. And to me, that's the most important thing for becoming more like a local, right? So one of my favorite events to go to is actually the rodeo. So I grew up in Claremore, which is near Tulsa. So it's like opposite of Henrietta, you know, from, from Tulsa. And the rodeo in Claremore has like won a ton of awards and it's an awesome outdoor rodeo that they have every Memorial Day. So I'd always go to that. Sure. And I think that is a perfect place for you to like kind of understand Oklahoma culture. But what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, I, I think there's probably not much more that's gonna be more Oklahoman than the rodeo. So yeah. I don't know if I'll have a better answer than that. But one of the things I really enjoyed uh, doing when I was a kid, even now, 
is going to visit the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, which mm -hmm. when we were younger, that was just called the Cowboy Hall of Fame, I think, or something near that. Yeah, yeah, it like houses the Cowboy Hall of Fame. So that's what's inside it. Mm -hmm. At least that's what we always refer to it as. But sure. that's really cool. That really gives the opportunity to understand better, yeah. um, you know, with the Western uh, history and culture, which of course is a yeah. lot of where Oklahoma came from. Yes, absolutely. I completely agree. And I was just telling Jonathan about the um, every year in Guthrie, they recreate the land run of 1889. So they have what's called like 89er days. And I haven't actually been to those, but I always went to the rodeo in, in Guthrie as well every year. So that might be another cool thing to take your family to that it's a really interesting cultural oh, experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. absolutely do that now, <laughs> now that I know about it. So. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So Very awesome. Good. The fourth thing that we have on our list here is the natives. So I grew up in Cherokee Nation. That's where Claremore is. And then Jonathan, you grew up, you grew up for a little while in Henrietta. Yeah, so I grew yeah. up in like Henrietta, Walika for at least a couple years of my childhood. Yeah, born in Oklahoma City, then went mm -hmm. to some small towns for a little bit. So right. So the thing I've always wondered about, and like we learned a lot, of, a, a little bit about it in school, and like some of my friends actually spoke some Cherokee because like even if they didn't look Cherokee, they were more Cherokee than you realize. Sure. Yeah. Because of the Irish blood <laughs> that mixed with Cherokees. One thing I'm not really sure about is like how much actual Native culture we were. Uh, experiencing and we just didn't know that's that's a really good point yeah 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 because I, I think it was more than I realize yeah I would imagine yeah. and also just growing up here mm -hmm. around likely more native um, yeah. you know, communities than some of you may be watching this mm -hmm. it's hard for us to really say because that's kind of what we've known and been right. around so yeah so I think um, some really good things to maybe immerse yourself in if you're interested in learning more about Native culture and like understanding how it affects Oklahoma life is of course going to a powwow. Have you been to one? I haven't actually. So I've been to a few when I was little mm -hmm. um, because I just haven't been to one here. And then going to the First Peoples Museum. Have you been to it? I have. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. It's a really cool museum um, that they have now and they're actually building a new resort. Oh wow. Right there I, as I well. I didn't know that. Yeah. They're building a new resort. So I'm pretty excited for that, but definitely check out that First Peoples Museum. It'll really give you an idea of what native life was like and what it's like now. Sure, yeah, that would be a great yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. All right, number five on our list is sports. Now, I'm not a sports person. However, I do think it's very important in the Oklahoma lifestyle. So I wanted to mention a sport that maybe some people don't realize is closely associated to like Oklahoma culture, and that is softball. So many of my friends go to softball games. I'm sorry, but you won't catch me at one. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but we always have the World Series here for women's softball. Yeah, no, that's yeah. a big deal. It's a and, really big deal. And nationally televised. So I mean, some of you may have already seen that, but it is, mm -hmm. it is it's not often talked about, but I think it's a good point to bring that up because yep. it is a big deal. And, um, you know, the, the girls in Oklahoma, specifically University of Oklahoma, yes. are always very highly competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And then, so what do you think is an Okie sport that people need to go to? Yeah, well, uh, traditionally, and, uh, you know, Marcy lives in Norman, so of mm -hmm. course you're aware of yes. you know, college football being a big thing here with the OU Sooners here. So that's a big thing here. It's hard to grow up here without at least being surrounded by people who think a lot of college football and are really yeah. invested heavily in either the OU Sooners or the Oklahoma State Cowboys in Stillwater. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more of a passive fan. Okay. I don't really have these super strong allegiances either way. Okay. I tend to root passively for the Sooners. I went, I went to school there for like a year and a half. Gotcha. So otherwise, you know, obviously we had newly, at least relatively newly um, in the last, what, 10 years or maybe longer. 10 years. Have, yeah. have the uh, OKC Thunder. Yep. So now everybody is a big NBA basketball fan. Big at least. <laughs> NBA fans. So. Yeah, absolutely. So you got to kind of at least kind of embrace some of that mm -hmm. uh, when, when living here. It'll definitely help you appear more local, would you say? Yeah, I think so. I think so. So one of my favorite other YouTubers to watch is this guy in Montana. And you guys may have seen his videos. I think he's really interesting and really cool. But one thing that he talks about is how much Montana locals hate people moving to Montana because they want to bring their culture into the state. And like, that's okay. We want to hear about your culture um, from other states or other countries. Absolutely. And you have to understand that in each state and each region, really in each state or even sometimes each county, depending on where you are in Oklahoma, we have very specific cultural norms that we follow. Totally. 
and like none of this makes someone like morally bad or morally good. We just have different ways of doing things. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this because like, we are seeing Oklahoma change quite a bit. And pretty rapidly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why we, want, why we wanted to make this video for you to help you understand what's important to Oklahomans and how you can make friends faster. So let's talk about driving then. Sure. <laughs> Good segue. So you've lived in Oklahoma City a while. Yeah, the majority of my life really I've lived here, yeah. So talk to me about the changes in driving over decades. Well, for one, there are just a lot more people on the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when I started driving at uh, you know, at 16, like mm -hmm. like most people. I did live here in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. at that point for a very long time, and uh, it just seemed like there was really not, ever, I mean, maybe sometimes during rush hour you'd encounter yeah. some, but so just many more people on the road, more to navigate, and I remember always going down to cities like Dallas. Okay. Where it was just total insanity to me. Yeah. As somebody from Oklahoma City. I don't know, what have you seen? So, I mean, I grew up in the small town of Claremore, so I didn't just even start driving in Tulsa until I was past 18, because okay. I was not allowed. Okay. <laughs> so, like, because the town I grew up in was 20,000 people. Sure. And I did start driving at 13, of course. That's when I learned to drive, and then started driving at 16 on the roads um, because of the country life, you know. But what I've noticed is more anger. Okay. Recently, um, and I'm not sure if that's, you know, just, anxiety from people like feeling too much stress in their lives. Could be. Yeah, for sure. And then of course we get a lot of Texas drivers, especially Norman, because most a lot of our students tend to be from Dallas and there is a very different way of driving in Dallas 100%. than driving in Oklahoma. Um, people are more passive here, Sure. would you oh, say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. More aggressive in Dallas. 100%. Very aggressive in Dallas. So then there's always like the waving, even in Norman, like, I wave at a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of weird, but it, it pays to be friendly. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, even in and out of traffic as things have got more congested. And you know, maybe some of that is that some people moving out of state yeah. as we talk about, you know, the cultures that we, the culture that we have here in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. and people have from where they're moving from. Maybe they're a little more aggressive from the places they came maybe. from. But over time, we're seeing more of that. But yeah. I still do a ton of um, you know, waving people in or letting people in or waving yes. when someone lets me in. Yes. Uh, which I think is really important to, at least for me, to try to maintain the that uh, Oklahoma City charm. I don't right. Know, doing yeah. my part. I, I know. I think one thing that gets me now is the honking. There's so much. Yes. <laughs> and like, we did not do that ever. Like in the 90s and early 2000s, like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like we did not honk. So it's weird for us. Yeah, it's definitely more than that, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Lots more honking. So that's terrifying, but here we are. All right, so I think me and Jonathan have both talked about whether or not Oklahoma is in the South. It's a debate. <laughs> it is, it's a debate. I don't know that it honestly matters, but sometimes people hear it in our accents when we talk. Absolutely. And I would say that I do not have a Southern accent. I have an Oklahoma accent. Would you yeah, agree Yeah, I say the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think mine has ever really come off very thick or whatever. Right. But when I was a kid, my dad lived in, in uh, Denver, Colorado. And okay. when, I, when I would go up there, mm -hmm. uh, they would say that they can hear the Oklahoma. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I have heard people say that to me, especially if I'm speaking other languages because I learned other languages in college. Hmm. They would be like, your Oklahoma accent is so thick. I'm like, really? really? <laughs> I didn't know that, cool. Um, so what I've noticed is that each small town has kind of a particular lilt to it. Sure. People from Oklahoma City may not have as thick of an accent. I think it depends on how many people you speak to outside of the state in a day. Sure. But yeah, that's been my experience. Both of my parents have pretty thick accents, uh, different thick accents too, because my mom is from Northeastern Oklahoma and my dad is from um, Edmond. So, sure. Yeah. And I think kind of like we talked off camera, uh, really mm -hmm. some of that's going to depend on whether you encounter somebody with an accent, whether mm -hmm. or not they're from maybe one of the smaller towns yes. outside of yeah. Oklahoma City. Right. And of course, it's going to be maybe more prevalent in the older generation, you know, yes. who largely may have been from smaller towns uh, You're right. you know, in, in their times. So. And they didn't really leave their town as much as we do. Sure. So yeah. it, it makes sense. 
Okay, so music is next on our list, and I really think that music is a huge part of Oklahoma culture. Would you agree? Absolutely. So probably the most famous, well, the most famous artist in the world, really, I think, is Garth Brooks. Oh, yeah. And he is from Oklahoma. He lives in my hometown now, but he's from Yukon. I think listening to his music will really kind of help you see some aspects of Oklahoma culture that you may have missed. What, what do you think? Absolutely. You know, that really, Garth, listening to Garth Brooks, to mm -hmm. me, really is kind of the identity mm. of at least my childhood growing up largely in Oklahoma City. Yeah. And, uh, and, and really all, like to your point, the, a lot of the lyrics in the songs really paint the picture of uh, living in Oklahoma. So that's kind of broadcasted that to the world, I think, a little bit. Yeah. And we have a ton of other really famous right. musicians that have come from here. Yeah. Carrie Underwood, super, she's super popular. Cause she, I remember watching her, you know. Oh yeah. She, <laughs> she was on, uh, what's it called? What's it called? American Idol. American yeah. Idol, yeah. I remember watching her in high school during that. And then people like Vince Gill, Ruby McIntyre. So, Sure. Yeah. And then we have even like, uh, you know, rock bands like mm -hmm. uh, The Flaming Lips yep. is, a, is a popular band, of course. And uh, yep. the All American Rejects, you know. Yes, I, love the Rejects, I actually yeah. grew up, you know, kind of playing music in mm -hmm. the same circles as a couple of those, yeah, those guys. So to see sure. bands like that just really blow up into like the a worldwide success is really kind of puts us on the map a little bit. It does. That's awesome. Okay. Number nine on our list is animals. And I just gave it the category of animals because I felt like that was the easiest way to talk about it. But there are a lot of farmers, ranchers in Oklahoma. I grew up on a ranch. And so I grew up with horses and cows. Um, I wasn't necessarily a cowgirl because I actually, <laughs> actually wrote English, not Western. <laughs> so that, that's what it was. And then of course, everyone loves their horses and their dogs and their space ultimately. Sure. So what, what has been your experience with animals in Oklahoma? So so actually just to kind of, you know, to say again, you know, I was born in Oklahoma City, but it was mm -hmm. around like first grade, I moved out into the country mm -hmm. and uh, amongst three different small towns, one of which was a town called Coweta, Oklahoma. Yeah, it was probably not far from yeah, Tulsa. Far, right. Um, and we had a farm, so we yeah. had chickens, and uh, mm -hmm. we shared a cow with our neighbor. Okay. Um, I can't say though that those are were my favorite memories. Of, okay. You know, because I definitely feel like I'm more of a city boy. <laughs> okay. uh, gotcha. In a lot of ways, but uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, not a lot of people get to experience that. Yeah. And uh, you know, we also had like ducks and guineas. Oh, and, cool. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that was so that, lots of fowl. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Plenty of fowl. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Last one on our list here is going to be festivals. So Norman has a ton of festivals, so including Norman Music Fest, which I think you've been to yeah. probably several times. We also have our jazz festival here in June in Norman. So Norman Music Fest is in April. Jazz Fest is in June. And we have Medieval Fair, which is in April. What others do you like? Yeah. There are a ton here in Norman. Yeah. One of the ones that a lot of people enjoy is the uh, Bricktown Blues Fest. Okay. Which I believe it's sometime in the summer. I don't recall I don't what, what month that is. I don't like blues. So. Yeah, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, you just yeah. because of all the you know different food and vendors and stuff. Right. I'm not much of a blues fan either, if I'm being totally honest. But, right. And then uh, there's always some cool little like food fest. One that comes to mind is Veg Fest, which is in Oklahoma City, and that may not be exciting to many of you, but I'm, I'm vegetarian, mm -hmm. so. Um, a lot of different foods to try. So always tons of little festivals and fun things to do, I yeah. feel like. No, I agree. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jonathan. Yeah, absolutely. Had a great time. Yeah. So thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, for sure. Don't forget to go and watch Jonathan and I's video on 10 surprising things about Oklahoma. You're going to find that right here and at the end of the video. Be sure to watch more of Jonathan's videos. He has a unique view on Oklahoma, so make sure you watch, like, and subscribe to his channel as well. Thank you.